A lot of parents wonder how much rough play is too much and what should I do to make it stop? So if you're curious to get some tips and to learn some rules around roughhousing, stay tuned because I'm gonna teach you three awesome tips for how to handle roughhousing. Hi, I'm Rachel Sklar and I support parents to raise children who are kind, who are resilient and who stay close to you in the long run. And I make it fun for everyone. The first rule of thumb for roughhousing is to learn the benefits of it. All animals play fight, and for good reason. It's a great training ground for them to practice resolving conflict. They get to learn social cues and social hierarchies. They get to build their confidence, and as they learn their own boundaries, they get to build an identity around that. And as they learn other people's boundaries, they get to learn how to navigate that as well, which is a great life skill to have. And most importantly, they get to practice self-regulation. Kids, and especially boys, need this type of play. It's just critical to their identity. I think that the risk of not letting them do rough and tumble play is actually greater than the risk of letting them do it and then potentially getting hurt. So now that you're convinced that rough and tumble play is important and a great idea, the question is how do you handle it when it makes you uncomfortable? The second rule of thumb is to clarify your rules around roughhousing. And I mean to do that like right now. Now I can't make up your family rules for you, but I'm gonna give you some suggestions. So the first suggestion is to make it time limited. And then you wanna check in with everybody when the time is up to make sure everyone's still having a good time. And the point is that you want them to quit while they're ahead, right? Uh, the second is to make sure that it's supervised. And I know that seems obvious, but it isn't always obvious and we get distracted. The third is to make sure that there's a safe word that everybody agrees upon. So it could be uncle, or it could be help, or it could be stop, whatever, as long as everyone agrees. The fourth would be to have make sure that it's in a safe space, so that there's no corners or table edges or anywhere someone could get hurt. And then the fifth, and this is a rule, is to pay attention. And I mean you as the parent are paying attention to whether or not everyone is having a good time. It's a great thing to role model as well. And then the last one is to really know what are your child's triggers so that you can help them and guide them to stop or to disengage when they get triggered. I was at a play date recently with a mom um, and some kids, and she told me that their family's safe word or their, um, their rule is to say on guard before they start fighting. And I just thought that was a really, really clear and wonderful, wonderful rule. I just loved it. The third rule of thumb is about what to do when everybody's following the rules and things still turn ugly. So our first instinct is to say, stop, 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 don't do that. But I think we need to avoid using the word stop because we don't want them to become deaf or desensitized to that very important word. Kids need to know that when someone says stop, whether they're laughing or not, that they need to honor that and respect it. It's just an important life skill. Stop is a universal safe word. So instead of saying stop, what we can say is, I heard someone say stop very clearly. That means you've gone too far, hands off. And that takes the uh, focus off of our agenda as parents and it puts it on their interaction with one another. Now it's your turn. What are your family rules around roughhousing? It's time to write them down, put them on the fridge, and make sure everyone's up to date. No surprises. You wanna let everyone know what's happening when you're up to a change. If you found this video helpful, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, friend me on Facebook, and head out over to my website for more great tips and tricks. Also, I encourage you to use the comments box below so that you can share your roughhousing stories, or please tell us what are your rules about roughhousing. So on behalf of your kids, I just thank you for watching, and I encourage you to go out there and completely rock.